The U.S. is a pretty rich country as far as countries go. While some people are apparently doing fine, most people I know seem pretty worried about money. Six out of ten people say they don't even have enough saved to cover a $500 emergency. So where is all this money? Is there a chart to help us find it? You've probably seen one like this that shows the distribution of wealth in the U.S. If not, load up on antidepressants and watch this video from a while back. I made my own version of this chart with data from the 2019 Survey of Consumer Finances. It shows the population of the United States broken into 100 groups sorted by net worth. Each of these groups is 1% of the population, or about 3.3 million people. Over here is their net worth, which is a bit of a tricky number, but it's basically how much you would have after you sold everything you own, like stocks, houses, and cars, and used it to pay back what you owe to banks, credit cards, and everyone else. So yeah, this is the chart that shows that most of the nation's wealth is held by only 1% of the population, while the other 99% clip coupons and try to make money on eBay. This is why you hear people talking about the 1% and the 99%. My problem with this chart isn't that it inspires outrage in a nihilistic sense that fate is a cruel jester laughing as we toil fruitlessly to inflate the power of an exploitative ruling class that seems hell-bent on leading us down the path of endless conflict and eventual extinction. My problem is that the number used to represent the 99th percent is a median net worth, which means half the people in here have more money than this number and the other half have less money. For every other group, you can tell when the number maxes out because if it gets too high, it gets sorted into the next group up. In this last 1% though, we don't really know the highest net worth because there is no next group up. You might have heard people say, it's actually not the 1% who hold all the wealth, more like 0.01%. So let's do some advanced data research to see if we can add some detail to this last column. Let's take a look at our new chart to see where all this American abundance is hiding. Well, it sure isn't here in the lowest 50%. That's only 3% of the wealth. This section represents 166 million people, with net worths ranging from $100,000 in debt up to a fairly comfortable lifestyle of $121,000. These feel like most of the people I come across. When we zoom out to 90% of the population, you start to spot a few millionaires. This slope here feels like what you might expect from a free market economy where amassing money becomes exponentially easier when you have more of it to invest. Maybe some of these people are greedy while some of these people are down on their luck or, you know, being lazy, waiting for government handouts, or maybe they just don't have that can-do spirit or a winner's mindset. But who cares? We're still only seeing 32% of the nation's wealth. When you add in the next 9%, the slope gets even more drastic as we try to fit people with up to $11 million onto this axis. This curve is still what you might expect from an economy that has wealth being passed down through generations and accumulating in the same hands over time, with maybe a history of policies that restrict poor and or non-white people from acquiring property. But this is only 69% of the wealth. Let's include everyone except the richest 0.1% of the population. Well now this is just kind of screwing everything up. The scale has to reach up to 51 million dollars, which means 98% of the people don't even make it to the first line on the grid. And if we're being accurate, these people shouldn't even be visible at this scale. Not sure if this is a glitch, but I'm going to go ahead and leave this one pixel line here just to remind people we exist. So here we've got 99.9% .9 of the population, but the chart is still short by 13%. Normally I'd let that slide, but it's more than quadrupled the amount held by half the country. Up till now we've been using the same old medians in the lower brackets, but now that we've got more data for the 99th percentile, let's see what happens when we include everyone. Huh. At this all-encompassing scale, the visible slope symbolizing the steep but climbable path from rags to riches is now gone, replaced by a meaningless void. Is our chart so broken that it's showing nothing of interest, or is it actually telling the whole story of American affluence, and it's so bleak that it's better to just ignore it? If we're searching for the last 13% of American wealth, it must be somewhere in this line. It's just as empty and meaningless as before, even for the top 0.1%. Nobody except a few people at the end even register on the scale. Since the scale is now in billions of dollars, let's take a look at the billionaires. Now we're only looking at 720 people. This isn't the 1% or the 0.01%. This is two ten thousandths of a percent, holding more wealth than half the country combined. The one nice thing, though, is that we can fit everyone on my chart. Did you know one person represents three ten millionths of a percent of the population? We can even see who they are. What's weird to me is that the wealth disparity just keeps going. How do we explain it now? Are these people more industrious than these people down here? Is George Soros a victim of his own conspiracy to keep himself down? Is Oprah just being lazy and waiting for government handouts? Is LeBron James lacking that winning mindset?
Maybe life isn't exactly unfair to the billionaire class, but this 4% of wealth is not distributed evenly. Half of it is in the hands of the top 100, and half of that is in the hands of the top 10. Only here do you start to see anything resembling a plateau. Is $100 billion the amount at which you can finally be rich enough? Or is it that there's no more wealth to be drained from the population because their capacity to build crap and buy other crap is maxed out? This chart isn't just about finance and economics. Money is power, influence, and freedom. Maybe I'm missing something, but this doesn't feel like the chart of a democracy where everyone has open access to opportunities. On the other hand, I'm starting to wonder if this situation is about more than people being too needy or too greedy or too much government or not enough government. Who's got a red hat? Who's got a blue hat? There are obviously things we're doing that make the curve steeper than it needs to be and things we could be doing to make it less severe. But this kind of continuously recurring pattern is starting to feel familiar. This has the markings of something even harder to understand than human behavior. It kind of looks like math. My old friend from high school, who keeps showing up at every party I go to. Not because he's invited, but because it turns out he's the one throwing it. We'll dive into that next time. In the meantime, go check out what we're doing at Comingle. You might find it interesting.